Hello there, everybody. My name is Carl Bergenham, and I am the product manager for Kendall React. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about exporting to PDF in React. So what we'll be doing is we'll be taking a look at the Kendall React PDF processing library, which as of the recording of this video is one of the few libraries out there that allows you to take any and all content within your React applications and export them to PDF. Now, just as some high level notes around kind of React PDF processing, it is a client side library built specifically for React and that allows us to export either a section or an entire application to a PDF file. This means that any section or subsection of your HTML can be exported and you can also export content contained within your existing React components. Some of the features that we have available within kind of React PDF processing includes things like customizing the image resolution of images that you're exporting, including hyperlinks within your documents that you exported, working with different paper sizes, customizing content and styling right before exporting so that the exported content can have a different look and feel than the existing content. Or for example, adding in items like your company logo and repeating headers over multiple exported pages if it's more than just one page that you're exporting. With all that being said, let's jump straight into some code and see how we can start exporting our React components to PDF files. To start off with, I've created a new blank project using Create React App, and beyond that, I've done really nothing else. Uh, so now we can go ahead and start working with Kenda kind of React PDF processing. Now, if you're wondering, well, where can I go ahead and get this package? Let's uh, first of all take a look at the main page here for uh, kendoreact.com or telerik.com slash kendoreactui. Uh, my browser is a little bit small here, but if I were to expand this, we'll eventually see that the menu pops up here and you can jump into docs and demos in order to be able to start taking a look at all the components available. There we go. Now at the top here, we see that we have a lot of different components that we can work with. And specifically, I do want to take a look at the PDF generator or PDF processing. And when we click on that link, we see that we get a bit of a description of the component alongside uh, with um, some examples that we can use. So with each example, you can jump in and you can take a look at the source code, which has a full source code listed here. Or you can even uh, edit this in stack blitz and be able to tinker around with this without even committing it to anything within a local file project. Now let's uh, jump over to getting started because this is what allows us to take a look at what we need to get this added into our project. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just scroll down to the installation here, which you see we get the npm install command for PDF processing. So I'll go ahead and just cl click on copy code, or I can, of course, just highlight this and copy it. I'll jump over into my terminal. I'll paste that in. Hey, everybody. Future Carl here. And I just wanted to pause the video to highlight something on your screen, specifically the at progress candle licensing npm package. You will see this as a part of any installation of any Kendo React UI component. As Kendo React is a commercial library, we do require that developers provide a license key when they are working with Kendo React components. You can obtain a license key through a free trial or by purchasing Kendo React. For more information, I'm throwing up a link on the screen here that you can refer to to be able to dive in and see exactly how licensing works and how you can go ahead and apply a license key to your project. And I do know as a part of this that in the future I'm going to use some buttons. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take a look at what else is offered within Kendo React to see if we can use that uh, within our project as well in the future. So I'm going to just uh, scroll up here, uh, go back and open up uh, this menu open it in a new tab. And within this new tab, I can now start looking at all the available components within Kendo React. And look at this, we have a buttons package uh, where if I click on this, we have a ton of different buttons that we can uh, choose from. So button, button, group, chip, etc. all contained within one package. And we can see that we have the ability for these buttons to have a couple different stylings that we can work with. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. I'm going to install uh, this particular package pop back into my terminal, go ahead and npm install that. And then one last thing I need to do, uh, because now we have some UI components, not just the PDF processing library in my project, I'm also going to go ahead and install a, a Kendo React theme. Uh, so what that looks like is we have a couple of different design languages that we support, material design, 
we also support Bootstrap, and then we have our own uh, theme that we call the default theme. And in order to be able to get to that, uh, I'll have to just scroll down here into styling, click on that. And we see here that we can do npm install. And in this particular case, it installs uh, one uh, particular theme, so Kendo theme default. In my case, I, I do want to work with material design. So I'm going to paste this in, and then it's just going to replace the default at the end with material. And really, that's it in terms of installation. What I'm going to do just to make things a little bit easier is that within app.js, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this piece of code here, the import, and just do that right away. Uh, so I'll copy and paste this. And instead of Kendo theme default, we are using material. And then there is one other thing about material. If I pop in here into the material theme and overview, uh, we see here that we have the installation, right? Kendo theme material. Um, if I scroll down, we do also want to make sure that we are including these two styles. So specifically linking uh, to Roboto, since that's what our application wants to use, and then also setting uh, the font family here in the body. Um, so if I pop over to index.css uh, here, I'll probably just remove uh, the CSS that we have in here and uh, just go ahead and copy and paste this in. There we go. And then just to make things easier on myself, I'll go into our index.html and just include the font that we want here. We could, of course, uh, do this a little bit differently, but uh, that should allow us to just have Roboto as our basic and default font. All right, so now that we've kind of bootstrapped our project, just adding in a couple of kind of React components just to make things nice and pretty. Uh, everything else is, of course, uh, driven by PDF processing, which is uh, something that you do not need to use the rest of the Kendo React components for. Uh, this is just purely for styling. All right, now that we have our application up and running, I'm going to start off by just uh, getting rid of everything within this div here. And I'll just get rid of the class name as well. I'll do an H1 tag here. This is Kendo React PDF processing. And additionally, I'll do a, a paragraph element. All right, so nothing too crazy yet, right? And everything is, is completely blank. We have our H1 and our paragraph. What I'm going to do now is just go into app.css and I'm actually going to remove everything in the CSS file and I'm going to paste in some custom styles. So specifically I have app content and then we have a neat style here that I'm going to apply to an element and I'm also going to eventually create a button area with some buttons so these are just some helpful styles to make things look a little bit pretty uh, so I'll start off by taking app content and I will go to my main div here give it a class name and that refreshes we now see okay we, we got some additional styling here now eventually I do want to export this when I click a button so Let's go ahead and actually uh, work with some kind of React buttons here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back into my documentation and I will just go to the main overview page. I see that we have the buttons package and I want the button specifically. So if I click on that, we see basic usage and it gives us an idea of how we can start working with the component by jumping over into view source. Now I want two buttons and I am going to style them differently. We'll see how in a bit. I'm going to just import button like this. So I'll go ahead and just move that down here. And then I'll do another uh, div area for the button specifically. And then I'll just say button. And then we have this primary prop that I can uh, set to true, which will give us a different styling than a non-primary button. So I'll just say primary button and then pass it in another button. I won't give it a primary prop and instead I will just say default button for now. All right, and with these two buttons added to our application, we see now that we have two buttons already styled, right? Thanks to the import here of the kind of React theme. We have the primary button and the default button. Now, one thing, they're right next to each other, right? So we can go back to our app.css and we see here that I have the button area uh, set up here for a class. So I'll go ahead and just copy and paste that. Give this a class name of the button area. 
And we see now that uh, they're separated a little bit, just gave it a quick little margin. So we've added these two buttons and we now see the different look and feel. And I'm just going to add and remove one of them for now because we're all just going to click on one to export the content. And I am going to go ahead and give this an on click event. So on click. And I'm just going to call this handle export with component and it'll make sense in a bit. So up here, I'm just going to say, grab this event handler. And of course, if we want to, we can always make sure that we have logged everything. So now when I jump over into my browser here, open up the console, hit the primary button, we see that we get the click event. Perfect. This is no different than how you would approach this with a regular HTML button, right? So we already are working with a more style button while also, of course, being able to use the React we love and enjoy today. All right, now how do I take what I have here and say, I like this H1, I like this paragraph, and uh, even the button actually, let's include that in the export and go ahead and export that to PDF. Well, let's jump back into the documentation and see what that looks like. So when I'm over on the Kenner React PDF processing page, I have this getting started basic usage demo, which allows us to export with component and export to PDF with a method. And I'll go into detail exactly what that looks like and the difference there in our example actually. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and jump into view source and I'm going to just copy this first part here. So now we have PDF export and save PDF imported. And these are the two different ways that we can start working with Kenner React PDF processing. So PDF export is actually a component that we can use to wrap around our content in order to declare this is what's going to be exported when we export to PDF. So the way this looks is that I can take everything under app content here. I could even have this be the main root element of my component, although I don't need to in this case. Uh, but I'm just going to say PDF export and go ahead and just wrap everything that we have here within my div in one single component. Now, in order for us to do something with this, we do need to have a reference to it. So in that case, I'm going to go ahead and actually import some things from React. Uh, I'll go ahead and maybe just remove this logo import and I will just say import use ref from React. And now what we can do is we can go to PDF export and provide it with a reference or just work with the ref prop. So in this case, I'm going to just give it ref equals PDF export component. And there's a lot of different things we can do with PDF export, by the way. So if I look over in my documentation here, scroll down to the API and maybe open that up and then go to PDF export props we can see all the available configuration options that we have here. So we can set up author, avoiding links, creator, date, file name, and a ton of different things. But in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and define the paper size to make that a nice same default. So go in here. We can even see the options that we have available. So we have A0 through 10, B0 through 10, Z0 through 10, uh, a bunch of different ones. Uh, but in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and say that paper size is equal to A4. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this because we still need to actually define our PDF export component variable. And I'll just say this is equal to use ref and then null since we do use it just down here later. And now in order for me to be able to take this and go ahead and export the content within it, I can work with this handle export with component. So I'll replace console.log here and I'll do PDF export component dot current dot save. And this will actually go ahead and trigger the uh, saving functionality that we have within the PDF export component. So it will take everything that we have in here. So this H1, the P tag, the div tag, and even the button and export this. So see what this looks like in our application. We see that nothing has changed in terms of styling, right? And nothing has really changed in terms of impact in the HTML. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button. 
Let me see that we get export the PDF because I didn't pass in a custom file name. I open that up. And now we see that we have Kinder React PDF processing and the exact same content that we had in our application. Now I alluded to one other way that you can go ahead and export content and that can actually be done using a method. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and close that export the PDF and I'll go back into my app.js and now I'll go ahead and throw in that button that we had before. I won't call it primary and then I'll say export with method instead. And while I'm in here, instead of primary button, I'm going to just say export with component just to make sure that we know the two differences, right? Okay, so we have on click again, handle export with method. Grab that. Set up the event handler here. And now in order to be able to actually export something, we can use save PDF, but in order to do that, we need to be able to pass in some HTML content. And while we could, of course, grab, for example, this main div and try to grab it with some query, we can again use a reference. And what I'll go ahead and do is I'll just wrap around uh, all of our content so far and have a div with a reference that we can grab. So in this case, we have div. Wrap this around. And I'll call this content area. And we, of course, need to define our variable, so I'll do that up here. Get another use ref. All right, so now we have the content area. So in my event handler here, I'll do save PDF. And when I open this up, we'll see here that IntelliSense will help out quite a bit, where I just need to pass in a DOM element or an HTML element, and then I can pass in an options object in order to be able to do the same thing that I did here with the props, but just in a single object within my method. So in this case, I'll go ahead and pass in content area dot current comma, and then here we'll pass in an object where we'll do paper size again. We'll set that to A4. So this way we'll get the equivalent export of content in both the component method and in the method method. All right, so first let's go ahead and just export with component so we can see what that looks like side by side. We'll open that up first and we'll see that it's the same as before. And then I'll go ahead and say export with method and we see that we export it with PDF again. And now we can compare the two and they end up being exactly the same. So the reason that we're showcasing this is that this gives you a lot of power in terms of how you want to be able to approach exporting with PDF. It might be easier for you to grab something with a method and just do what we did here, call save PDF and export that. Or you might prefer the declarative approach and having the PDF export component in your React component to be able to figure out what section should be or should not be exported. The power here lies in that you can wrap the PDF export component around any of your existing HTML and just go ahead and do what we did here and you can start exporting your content immediately. No additional configuration options are needed. Now the HTML that we have here might be a little bit simple so let's go ahead and spruce things up a little bit. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close these out and first of all we have this this is an example of text that may be styled and nothing is really styled here so what I'll do is I'll take this last word and I'll just wrap around it with some span tag. And then if I go into app.css, we know that I have something called neat style. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this, go back into app.js and give this a class name, neat style. There we go. We see now that we get this little bolded and underlined and also pinkish kind of style in this particular part of my text. And I also want to go ahead and import an image and start working with that. So what I'll do here is I'll just call out import. And I already have this lovely React Kendoka uh, image, and we'll see what that looks like. So I'll just say import Kendoka from, from our image here. And then uh, within my text here, what I'll do is under the H1, I'll throw in an image tag and then pass in the Kendoka. 
Give it an alt tag, of course. Now we can go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, so the Kondoka is on the page. We see now that uh, we have some additional styling that we can work with. What does it look like when we export it? Well, go ahead and hit export with component. Open up the exported PDF file. And now we see Kendo React PDF processing with the Kondoka in the middle and even the updated styling in here. So these are, of course, basic HTML elements, but this gives you an initial idea of what things can look like when you might want to export PDF content on your own. You can now take this and start applying it into your own applications, either starting small like this, or maybe even wrapping around a big block of content that you already have, and with one simple click, be able to export all of your content to PDF. In part two of this video, We'll dive into how we can use CSS in order to customize the layout of a page, including adjusting the layout to different paper sizes on the fly. There'll be a link in the description below.